So it's this feeling to invite you fully, fully in my being. You are my being. <laughs> but to invite you in all the aspects of my life because I see some, like, in some activity or in some aspect, I feel as if I'm by myself and I have to work it out by myself. And um, I know this is not true and I feel so much to invite you fully, fully, fully. Yeah. Because the, the reference to yourself, sorry, I think we're blocking. No, I uh, The reference to yourself um, is being shaped in, in, in personhood, no? Uh, when you speak like that. Yes. But um, so that sense of a personal um, self uh, needs help always because it's. Is an identity that's created through the mind and through conditioning, through identity. And uh, you know, for most people in the world, uh, they are not aware of an option. When they say I, it refers to a personal self. And nobody encourages it to encourage us to look more deeply into that. So, for mm, most people on the planet, at, in our time, uh, their sense of self is uh, very, very personal. And uh, although in reality it is not, but experientially, it, with, unto themselves, they uh, take themselves to be just a person, which is a concept shaped in the mind. They are not that. Actually, we are the pure universal consciousness. Mm. When when it becomes clear, and for some reason, you, when I meet you, anyone who come to satsang, I did not come to anyone in an individual way. Oh, you come! I want to be no. I, so we met like this. You came. So already for me, it's like the universal consciousness is behaving like that. It's bringing the sense of individuality together, and I know it can only be to wake up to its original nature, so that it's no longer covered. You are mm, uh, to get out of this covered reality into your natural state. So that's already confidence is there. Because nobody else is coming like that. Most people you meet in the world, they have they don't manifest any real um, sense that they are aware of themselves at a deeper level. So of course I don't push them away. Of course I meet I meet as you can, you know. Um, what happens uh, very often is um, I have total trust that whatever encounter I have, even with the animal. You know, it is driven by the universal consciousness. We don't have to overanalyze that. The faith in that is already enough, and it makes the space to impart grace everywhere. You know, happen like that. You know. Satsang is very uh, unusual um, when we are many people in the world. Um, are meeting for spiritual reasons. If you take the various religions, Christianity, Islam, the religions of India, Buddhism, Sikhism, all these things, there are people on a such spiritual journey also. So these are already millions of people are doing. But the majority are searching with a strong sense of individual identity, of personhood. The best we can do in our personal search, because we have a strong sense of identity as a person, and so we, we are introduced to a God who is the highest person in our mind. 
It's like God, for most people, is regarded as an entity, like the supreme entity. And the supreme consciousness manifests also as the supreme entity to suit whatever religious projections we have about it, because it's also an aspect of love. But when we come to search for truth, all human beings, nearly all of us, we follow some categorization. We have a sense of ourselves, of your gender, of your race, of your religion, of your culture, of something. These attributes we hold to be important for our identity. But a sage is beyond all these things. Superficially, they may dress like a Muslim or a Hindu or Christian or an atheist. They can dress anyway, but internally, they have come into wholeness, into universal consciousness. Yes. Yes. This wholeness, I invite. Yes. I mean, there is n- not. I'm not separate from it to invite it, but where, where, in some aspects, I feel I shrink in. A, like yes. Kind of shrinking a person, and that's yeah. where. Just to. Yes, and that being so, for all of us, because mm-hmm. even a sage is aware of a sense of a personal self. They may have a family, they may have a job, and they they are functioning in those jobs. So what is the difference? Is that they don't feel I have to get rid of these things or something. They don't have an issue with them. The issue is only to do with identity. If they are living on the, on, on the basis of personal identity, then they will be living in a much more complex inner environment. But they have solved the, the mystery of personhood to realize that there is not really, in reality, the person is only a very superficial idea. They have come into the realization of the unchanging consciousness. And I feel uh, blessed in realizing that everyone is it. There's nobody is not it. Everybody is the universal consciousness. But it's to be aware of this, not just mentally, not just conceptually, but to transition into that consciousness. So it's okay for us to say, <clears throat> I am personal and I'm impersonal. You see? In, in, even uh, as I said before, a realized being may still relate to their family as they, they know. It's not like it doesn't exist. The people who say, "Oh, nothing, no, it doesn't exist," like this, in a dismissive way, yeah, are still not awake about it. They say, "No, it's existing, but it's a kind of temporary and illusory existence. Even the sense of myself as a person is still an illusory existence. What knows that?" is my true self. And what knows that, when I say my true self, I'm not having an idea of my true self elsewhere. It, it is here. And it is true for everyone. It's not that we are so unique. Maybe the uniqueness is only that you have transcended the mirage, the illusory world of personhood. To wake up out of that is the most amazingly beautiful thing. I wouldn't even call it an experience, because all experiences happen and come and go. So I don't know what to call it. The truth, you know. And so what you're asking is totally relatable. And it is totally the questions that all the sages asked. They had to start there. You see, to ask, you know, I, I, I feel so I'm aware of the limitations of a personal self. And something is struggling to, to come out of this. And uh, they may ask, depending on who, and everyone is moving in accordance to their to their destiny. Uh, destiny is not uh, no matter what your destiny, you're still under the the presence of God. And through whatever seeming destiny you have, is the path through which uh, He will guide you uh, back to yourself. To uncut, to be uncovered from the uh, conceptual identities and so on. So your question 
or your request. When it comes genuinely from the heart, let you know. Because how can it become genuine? Also by God's grace will give make you genuine. And it can be looked at that your soul is in a journey of shedding, getting rid of its illusory dream self. And that is satsa, that is a sadhana. To be to wake up out of the limitation of personhood. It has to be happening. And the paradox can be that when you come into the, the living opportunity, then all kind of negativities are coming up. <laughs> and, uh, and so it's important to what a teacher can do is to tell you, don't believe that these negativities are judgments against you. And they are a form of release, because we have forgotten how much toxic energies and information comes in with the person. And our personal the story of your life in this form might be 30, 40, 50 years. But the journey of your soul is far beyond the limitations, the, the, the time frame of your body. So for a long time we have somehow been living in the in the role of some identity for a while, becoming each each life lifetime or in a life form is given in in some way we can say loosely to um, process and to learn to transcend a bundle of vasanas you understand vasanas mm-hmm. yes yeah, some latent tendencies some dormant tendencies to kind of clean them which as you clean them yeah some other ones come they're not necessarily new but they come and you say we're always cleaning always cleaning when each time the consciousness is becoming more pure, more pure, more pure, more pure, like you're dropping the weight, becoming more pure. But still, you can transcend many things and still remain in the paradigm of personhood. You become a blessed person. You know, like but all this transcending or cleansing is also seen at the same time. It's like Something yes. is evolving and something We cannot is totally absurd. trust that seeing because there are many things that are functioning in our lives that we are not conscious of it. You understand? Uh, we we think we seem to feel like we have an understanding of something. But when real understanding comes, you realize, whoa, there were so much either hidden things. Mm-hmm. You see. So is grace of God when we pray now recently I've been sharing that, you know two things. One is that, for most people, we have a sense of ourselves as an entity. No? That I am this person, this is my body, and my, our attachments to our conditioning, our uh, identity, our projections and dreams, and all of that, constitute a kind of like a... Like it makes like we are solid in the form of our beliefs and shape and identity like that. Mm. But largely we are suffering from a lack of awareness of what we truly are. We have some awareness, but it's tarnished by you know conditioning, habit, arrogance, ignorance, you know? So we don't our pictures are not clear like that. And that's why the grace of God is so important, you know. But it comes with humility. It comes also through trying and failing and realizing that by your ego's ability is not enough. Um, I used to say many years ago that this whole human world concept, it really doesn't work by itself. It only works when it wakes up in connection with the Supreme Consciousness. Otherwise, it's just rolling downhill. When it connects consciously, then it wakes up. Now, I want to say something that might sound a bit unusual, because human being, human being is not a reality. The reality is of your pure consciousness. 
unaware of our true nature now. So a human being cannot overcome human being, meaning the limitations of. We may try to overcome by brutality and force, but that's not overcoming. Become more stuck. So there's nothing anyone can do to surprise God. There's no original thought. So there is no God saying, "Oh God, I didn't know that they would do that." There's no, there's no such thing. This is a human uh, identity idea. All of the the book of existence, the living book of existence. The one author is the Supreme. But the Supreme can be conceived of as an entity like the Great God. It manifests like this also, the Great God. But every doctrine has a different idea about God. Even within its own collective doctrine, there will be variation depending upon the way that your being has functioned. So no one can know God like that. We may have uh, your heart, your devotion, your love, your yearning makes you more pure and brings you more into the or into the into the realm of God understanding like that. I'm saying this because I would like that you open up enough to understand that everything in the universe It's like I gave an example. If you are, if you, an, a, a writer writes a book. I've said this example before. A writer has written a book, and it's got it's a great book. It's got many different characters in it. They all are different. They all play a different role. And some are really nasty and horrible and vicious, and some are wonderful and kind and loving and sociable. And they're all so many, so diverse. And everything in the book, the good guys, the bad guys, the boring guys, the exciting people, the wonderful things, the acts, everything in the book, although they seem so different in character, all come out of the same pen of the same one author is writing them. No character in the book can say, Listen, guys, we don't like this story. But shh, don't let the author know. <laughs> We're not going to show up in the next chapter. We are going to protest. We want things to be different. Okay. If that's in the book, it's by the author's creativity. It's a way of looking, you know. Just to show that nothing, there is no one living, hiding from God. That is also his writing, his writing in this book. In the book of creation, on every level of the manifest world, of the physical and the non physical realm, of any part of the universe, is penned by God, meaning everything is manifestation. If you understand that, then it will save you from really the effects of delusion. Because you just kind of know, God knows. If you know that, then you will realize you can never really be lost. And when you realize you can never really be lost, your salvation is at hand. You understand? So mm, it is not enough by itself because you cannot know things intellectually, and they become real enough. They have to be experiential. Meaning that what you think you know is not enough. Uh, the highest knowledge really is uh, to see that uh, nothing exists in your world independent of your consciousness. You are the witness of everything that's arising. Even if you think it's happening over there to these people, it's still in your consciousness. It's appearing. If you realize that whatever manifests through the mind and the senses are phenomenal, meaning that they have no 
independent or lasting existence, their only appearances, their only effects in consciousness, and the weakness of them is apart from them, and that weakness is yourself. That is not theoretical. It must become obvious. And when it becomes obvious, it is like these things will not then trap you. For a while, your life, on, on its personal level of manifestation, may still feel, oh, but why did this still happen? and so on. But at some point, you are going to see everything that arises in you is witnessed in you. When you realise that the witness is not a person, the person is witnessed. And what is witnessing you? It cannot be said. You can say it is consciousness or whatever, but you come to see, it must be me, but not the personal me. You see? So the most important character is this which vibrates in the in the identity of I. You have to take the I beyond the limitations of a personal identity into like the mm, uninvolved weakness. And the uninvolved weakness you'll come to see that it's not an entity, it's like it's consciousness. And this is this is gradually happening, I cannot try and make that more clear. And then on top of that, if you ask in your heart, then as you did, please help me to, to go beyond the the grip of the psychological identity. You have asked that because consciousness has opened that up inside you. And then uh, in my heart I feel it inside, so be it. So be it. And uh, it will take it time to continue no percolating. Continue. Little bit by little bit it becomes more clear, something in the mind and you say, you offer this up, you can see that this becomes more clear. Recently we've been asking in Satsang that before when we sit, before contempl- before the deep contemplation in the just be exercise, I've been saying mm, Make this prayer that you ask God, please scan me. You're asking this, but by God's grace, you're fit enough to realize and to ask this. Please scan my being and please dissolve or delete the message in me that is still alive, that is bearing and creating fruits of suffering, sinfulness. Confusion, depression, anxiety, whatever it is that is manifesting those things, I offer these up for them to be transcended or dissolved or to delete them. That's a conscious prayer, you see. Once you do this, then by God's grace, will start to come, you start to recognize, you start to see the things that you were not seeing before. And then you can consciously offer this thing. I offer this thing. And so gradually the the the, the fingerprint of that message gets gradually erased out. And that can keep going on. If something gets more and more purified as you go, no? just purify, purify. Mm. But then when you come to the exercise, the power of the exercise is that. It is non-conceptual. Many things you think about myself, oh, I am so impatient, and I wish I could be more kind, I wish I would give more. These are all personal requests. Ultimately, they are kind of illusory also. So are you in the, in the mode of a personhood, but it is very difficult for human culture to accept that I am illusory. How can I be? I am here, I am here. Mm-hmm. So, it it's a gradual um, cleaning that you can comprehend these things and see it can be seen. So if this I, if a sense of I is polluted, then still a sense of I is aware of that pollution, and that I must be beyond that. You see, like this gradually, all this work is happening by grace. 
you can sell the grace of God or the grace of your true self is coming. It's the same thing. So, um, in the exercise, say, let's start with just letting go of everything. And don't say, let's try anything. Just say, let go. We become detached of all things. You'll be surprised at how simple it can be. You don't have to analyze or oh, this thing. No, just everything. Everything that manifests is illusory, even the idea you have of yourself. Just don't hold on to anything. It's like somebody say to you, um, you go and sit over there and just keep quiet. Don't mix with anybody. And you feel thank you, and you go. You let go of all your associations, all that's arising in the mind. Maybe you can't stop it, but as it comes, you just say, "Okay, I won't log into the energy of it." And you may have to try a few times, but little by little bit, you're coming out of it. You're coming out of the, the state of delusion. So let go of everything. Okay, let go of everything including the idea, your favourite idea about yourself, or your not very favourite idea about yourself, everything, to let go, let go, let go. As though they were like some, some, some psychic hole was made in your body, and everything you have learned has gone. Everything was drained away. Everything that you have learned, or understood, or misunderstood, every idea, Every identity was kind of like just, just, just left. You will still find something here that cannot be taken out. It is not personal. Totally empty, intentionally also. What is that unmixed? That is the consciousness. That's the root of all experiencing. Consciousness. It is consciousness that arises as the sense I am. And so the name, the sense I am is the intuitive name of consciousness. When I say, that if a being came to you and say, I favour you, ask of me anything in the whole world, and I can give it to you right now, and you ask them, what will it cost me? He says, all, all you can have, everything in exchange for your consciousness. Then you'll see that is complete nonsense. Because without consciousness, I cannot even be aware of myself. I cannot be aware of my own existence. I say this because consciousness is at the root. If everything is lost or everything is found, it does not make any difference to consciousness. It's pure consciousness, when you say, I am, the real significance is consciousness, or the sense of beingness. That's an intuition that doesn't belong, it's not associated with anything. It's beyond the concepts of parents and friends and religion and last year and next year and heaven and hell and all of these things and Muslim and Hindu and Christian and all of these things. It has no it has no none of these things is beyond it's pure, pure, unpolluted presence of God. That is what is there. The rest is what we entertain through culture and the basic the basic root identity, which is the belief I am this body, I am my culture, these are my parents, these are my friends, this is my education, these are my dreams and all of this. When we are very much strong in this conviction like that, then we are locked in ignorance. This knowledge that I'm sharing you 
is not easily acceptable in the world. Because most beings, although fundamentally they are pure consciousness, one day you will come to see that only God exists. There is no such thing as independent, separate persons. Only God exists. So what does it mean? All these forms will disappear? No. The belief in their separateness will disappear. When your eyes are open like this. In the meantime, we have actions, reactions, interactions are happening, but something is outside of them, beyond them. It watches them with detachment. And you may think, what's the point of watching all this richness of life with detachment? Why? Because it is the root it generates. All the energy in life comes from him. Yet he loses nothing at all. Just like if I ask you, give me a replay of yesterday, you may think, Oh my God, where would I start? Oh, it's just a mess. Because yesterday at 10 o'clock I was thinking like this, but 11 o'clock it was completely different. I can't remember what it was. Nothing is stable except the consciousness, which the consciousness without a story. Now, in our world, we are accustomed to having a particular kind of story, a particular kind of adventure, seeking difference to fulfil our projections, and so on, like that. So we cannot appreciate pure consciousness. Pure consciousness doesn't mean there is no thought. No, it means that they may arise, but they are ineffective against the purity of consciousness, meaning that you have transcended the need to be different from this and that. You have transcended. So your beingness is returning to its original God nature, like that. and it cannot be fooled. And it's all done. It's not the it's not the success story of a person. In fact, uh, you realize that the personal life is contaminated with all kind of delusions. The realization of the self is not like an accumulated knowledge, like you are some human encyclopedia of knowledge. Actually, you become totally empty, because the knowledge of the world and human beings is completely useless to the divine. Only love is there. Jai. When I say there, I really mean here. Okay. We use word there. There is no there. You have to drop the tea. <laughs> Everything is here. <laughs> there means mind. Can I just die in this love? Yes. The only thing that needs to die in the love is that which doesn't exist. This love and truth are one. Love and beingness are one. But it's not the flowery love. It's not so personal. We exaggerate personal love. We over. It's fine. It's fine. It's love also on every level. It's love. But the purity of love is synonymous with pure being. We don't have to try and so hard to be anything. It's the mind uh, not understanding its true nature, that is giving so much effort to become something that it can never be. You are already, you have to somehow realize that at some point it will come, by grace it's coming, that you will realize that you can never not be the self, and the rest is dreaming. What I'm sharing with you, I'm not giving you a pile of information to remember. These days, when we speak, I am not imparting knowledge in a conceptual form, but in the form of grace. And so what we experience is like, you become empty. The human mind wants to become full, but often is full of complexity. But grace comes, we say knowledge comes in the form of grace, and grace takes away the world from you takes away the complexities, leave you in your original nature, 
where you don't know what have I done to be so happy? I don't know what. I've done. <laughs> I don't know what I have achieved. I've achieved nothing at all. I've not. What have you gained? I've gained nothing at all. What did you lose? I lose nothing at all. Where are you coming from? Well, from kind of everywhere. I don't know if I'm coming from, you know. But you don't have to say that. But somehow, I don't know. It's like, don't think that knowledge is something that you're going to have this big, you know, religious encyclopedia or a spiritual encyclopedia. Knowledge manifests spontaneously. It's not that you have saved up knowledge. Saved up knowledge is always late. Actually, the sage and so on, they know nothing at all. Because they see to know something is limitation. They just are, like you just are. <laughs> they are not interested in becoming. They are not even interested in being. It just is. But it is not appealing to the egoic mind. The egoic mind is a journey that has to happen, and it's also in God's book. He writes the book. The souls have to, there are all these individual souls. Individual souls don't exist, actually. It's all in God's dream book. It's only God. And God is not an entity, He is the totality of all there is and can ever be. And your essence is He. He is not He, He is not She, He is not It, it is beyond the human conception. Your purity cannot be defined, and it cannot be defiled also. It is only true illusion that we appear to be this and that, and experience sorrow, anxiety, joy, inconsistency. It is all in the game of life. If you understand why it is playing like that, and that everything is to help you to grow in discernment and simplicity, if you understand this, they will not trouble you deeply. You will not fight against them. Who is going to speak? Can I just ask okay. One thing? Mm. I feel like um, every moment I'm trying, I'm... every moment you're trying. No. Sorry. Um, I'm just. Sorry. There's something that feel that you there is, you have to make effort to be true. And in a way, sometimes it is true. It's part of the game. You have to be. If you're just lazy, uh, it, it's uh, it's also an uh, an aspect uh, and a play um, of the illusory self, also. So the grace gives the generates the energy to search. Also, everything is in the book. Everyone is discovering in accordance to the the maturity of their being. If we understand that everyone is in their own, their own cycle of evolution, and that it's not linear, someone may seem to be very stuck and so on, <laughs> and you may think I'm doing so well. Next minute they surpass you. <laughs> you see, it's not linear like oh yeah, you know he's going at five miles an hour. It will give for another two weeks. And no, you cannot do that. <laughs> At some point, it is as though the waking up is the waking up out of the dream of illusions. Part of that illusion. Why God make like this? Because the story is meaningful at a certain layer. And you transcend the meaning of that layer, and then you find out like it dissolves. Maybe another layer. At some point, you're going to say, I'm not interested in any more layers. I, I, I kind of get it. That doesn't mean that you have. But at some point, your soul, your heart becomes content. Like the urge, the burn to find out. Is, somehow, it's just like dropping away. But don't say, it's dropped, that's it now. No. <laughs> don't make any conclusion about anything. Just stay empty 
and present. It's very nice. <laughs> Can I speak? Yes, please. Oh my lord, so I'm so blessed that you're doing exercise, the the prayer, so like it's <laughs> you're helping us too much. Like you are giving everything and we are so blessed that I I can't find words. I just want to express my gratitude because you were speaking exactly what you also <laughs> you gave me this this grace because I am drawn to listen again and again for many 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 days maybe weeks this short you have a very short uh, Sarge Express video about see everything as God see everything as consciousness yes. and that's the the highest attitude and also you mentioned the same thing when I was listening because you also drawn to the, me to the Ribu Gita to, because this is the highest and it's very hard to understand but some, somehow it's not about the understanding but some, something is drawing me very very deeply you are drawing me <laughs> because I I accept it from Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharshi that and I know that we, I don't exist. Whenever I am believing something, I just take the role and going. Like I, I see this that is going with this habit of believing that okay, I'm I'm I am the son of this. I'm I'm the father of this one. So, but if I don't have any kind of idea, then that's it's free. But I have to play the role because it see that has to go. The saguna has to go in the the way because this it's not my way, not my play, it's your play. So we have we have to act as as we are really the good role you player. You are made to act. Ah, yes. Yeah. And, and, uh, you, yes. And I would like to ask, to please bless my heart. Uh, blessing you all the time. <laughs> if I can ask. But please bless my heart to be, to be so open to uh, because you are already opening to this highest kind of understanding, not not mental, you know, heart heart understanding too. Because I'm really seeing that everything is God. But please let me let me be live fully, breathe fully, see fully, be fully, without me at all. So like I'm just let me not exist. Yes, yes. This this is, this is the. Uh, the Lord brought you to that level of uh, refinement in order to make that kind of request. So if by His will He brought you that level of refinement, it means that He imparts the grace to you. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. This is your grace. And just you accept. Thank you. Just say thank you, thank you, thank you for. We don't have to itemize what you thank you for. Just live with the attitude of gratitude and say thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm. And uh, in everything that comes, you are the untouched one. That's not an attitude, oh, I am the untouched. No, you see, actually, there's in the exercise, the just be exercise is really revealing this. You see, you have to calculate, just, just keep the attention in beingness. Starve the mind of its nutrient that keeps on producing delusions by holding the attention in beingness. And that might seem to be forceful, yes, it is in the beginning. Because it takes some force to counteract years of, you know, false, you know, practices and delusions. So in, you hold it there, hold it there, and actually, why you're doing it is you're training the mind to be in the heart. We have not done it, so the mind has became like spoiled child. It just what he wants to do and done. You say, "Come and sit down." He just laugh at you. You can make me sit down. Make me sit down. That's how arrogant it will come. Mm. So you can't say, OK, listen, you, sit down. He says, laugh at you. You have no power, because you are saying to the mind, sit down. 
is also personal and it's also mind. So you don't have the power. When you hold to the sense of being, and then you see initially, you feel the potency and the arrogance and the restlessness and the habit of the mind, and you see that it's it you you as a person have no power against him now. He's too wild. Where the child is is ruling the parent. Now the parent is not the true parent. The parent until now is a kind of false parent, which has been the ego is trying to control its own delusion. But when you hold into the sense of being and the life, the grace of God has been preparing you for that, for that capacity, for that ability to hold the attention here, even though it's in the reflex is to go back into the noise and so you keep doing, say persist, persist. And gradually, you see, when I break up the contemplation time, so do five minutes or seven minutes first, and then ten minutes, not ten minutes to break it up. So you, you feel these um, these spaces that gradually the intensity of the mind noise is lifting. And why is it lifting? Is because you're holding in beingness, and at a certain point it will rebel. But its rebelliousness will not serve it. It just gradually comes under the sway of grace, and it gets anchored because the mind wants to. Its true desire is to come back to the heart, but it cannot control its own bad behavior. So it needs a higher authority, and that authority comes from the grace of God, to impart to the seeker of truth again. Will you sit, do this thing? And it's not that you're going to sit, yes, but I tried it and this, and it has no beingness, has no story. It has no time frame. Beingness doesn't talk about yesterday and last year. and No, no, no. It's so pure. So no concept can really live in him, really. But then, you see, the immature um, being, the immature soul, is afraid of the beingness initially, because it is an addict, and its addiction is to have identity and go and create all kinds of things. So when it doesn't get that, it is going to be really angry. It is okay. Just hold that and don't, don't, don't go into the story. And gradually, you see, because everyone in the world is searching for the same thing. They just don't know. Everyone who is living in the mode of personhood or ego is a restless soul. That's why we always want the next thing and the next thing, because you are never satisfied. It wants the next experience and the next experience, the next, and that's the agitatedness. It cannot be content. Why? God make it like that. Actually, it's a blessing, because if you could be content with illusory things and delusion, you would be really lost. So the fact that at some point your life is not working is on the verge of grace, because I realize you don't have time to keep projecting. You somehow become desperate, and this desperate bring you to the cusp, bring you to the, to the, to the door of Nirvana. So everything, no one is forgotten by God. Everyone is in there, you know, and you can feel like you're I'm dying and you're up. You can feel I'm so up. And so this arrogance, humility, these are very powerful forces, but it's all in the dynamics of God. He has written the greatest book of life, living book. And so it's it's like that. If you go to watch a movie. And everyone in the movie is smiling. Huh? Uh, 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 you, you walk out before ten minutes, <laughs> because the human mind needs contrast. It wants the adventure. It wants a car chase. Uh, it wants a, 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 a sad moment, and then a glad moment, and then you know, sort of excitement, and then uh, disappointment, and then a death, and a life, and a birth, and this. And it loves the adventure of the diversity of the manifestation. It's addicted to action. 
and concepts. And so we we are we have all our dreams all over the place, and you cannot even sustain your single dream. Tomorrow you dream another dream, and like this, it's just going everywhere. <clears throat> so the soul is restless, and what is really searching for is rest and peace. That's why when anyone finds this peace, they know it. Even they may feel all my life I did not know peace, but when it comes, you know it, <laughs> and it's the most natural thing for you. <clears throat> but until you are somehow <coughs> graced into being ready to receive it, then we'll imagine it's going to come through a good job or fame or having a family or getting married or having a holiday home somewhere or being rich or whatever. We give all these things, or jumping off a mountain without a parachute or whatever you want to do. That the soul is looking for something, but the thing that it keeps getting and seeing is not this. This is why I show you that uh, the ancient uh, meditators, the sadhus of ancient time, they used to say this thing, neti neti. Everything the mind produces, they say, no, it's not that. <clears throat> it's not this. What about this? They could never say what it is, but they could only say what it is not. Because what it is, is what they are. We have appetite for the things of the world for a while. And that while can be, we don't know how to estimate time. We don't know. Everything must combust into spirit, and I feel that's really the only true indicator. The only what? The only true inner indicator that we know when it is not from the spirit, and we know when it is. Mm. is. And I feel this is just what you you gracing us to combust fully. Yes, yes. Because when we don't, when you're not connected here, every kind of thing fascinates your head. And they can give no real value to you. It's just information, sensations, momentary, transient, illusory. The facts of human being are fiction, mostly. Highly subjective in their interpretation, projections, highly deceitful and manipulative also. No one should be shocked by that. I just keep opening myself to that, to, to fully combust into spirit. Invite it. Invite it. Approach it. Ask. It's not one micromillimeter apart from you. Ask. My Lord, please rid me of ego. Combine me with you. Merge me with you. Absorb me in the truth. I don't even know what it means. It's just a sense I have. I, I can't follow my mind. I don't know what to believe in. But if there is an ultimate truth, please absorb me in that. This is something. This is power. Amen. Is by the grace of the Supreme. We are even sitting down here. I wasn't long just down the road in, uh, in Mario's shop, actually. Yeah. Okay. Looking at some old things. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. And I said, uh, Yeah. Um, yeah. Try an armchair now. Oh, I was trying. Ah, oh, yeah, sitting in an armchair. And she, I went. I tried it first. Then Krish went and sat in it. And she says, "Krish, this armchair is very, very nice." And I said, "Yeah, I tried it because I'm looking for an armchair for come to Risha place." Because she asked me, we are, "We're trying to find chairs." I said, "No, no, I, I have a lot of them." <laughs> so we're looking like that. I said, "Oh, but she's not far from here. Because you call and find out." 
if we can stop and I can look with the space you have to see if we can bring a chair and um, and maybe of course we stop have a cup of tea and then we come back and look what happened <laughs> whose idea was this <laughs> that it uh, unfold like this I don't know anything I just see as it unfold and I say this is the grace of God that we you know we are here sitting together and we are not talking about football we are not talking about yeah the market and this and cousin yeah no we are speaking about this in this it's a seeming uh, a little bit of misunderstanding because you are talking many times about netting at it but in case of this see everything as God, you are talking that whatever arising in you, thought, feelings, whatever, just see as coming, because it's true, it's coming from God. Uh, is it necessary to dismiss or just accept it? Okay, mm-hmm. this is God's will, so accept it. Oh, but there's, a, there's a time for both. Ah. It depends on the orientation of your being in any moment. There's a time to look and say, Whatever it is, neti neti. Why neti neti? It means that it's a it's 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 a phenomenon arising inside, and it depends upon a witness independent of it to recognize that this is something appearing. So it cannot be the original thing. It comes, it appears, and if if there's interest, it hangs around for a while. And you see, but whatever it is that comes, however subtle, however great, it's only a visitor. And so you say, but but I'm here to see it. Whatever it is that says I, and I say it is the formless witness, is, is, it shows up in this. Whatever appears in the sky is only a visitor. Whether it's a rainbow or a star, everything comes and goes. But the immensity of the space is untouched. That space is like our being. You're looking from here, but sometimes we're looking with a mixture of an idea we have about ourselves in the phenomenal sense. I said, but that also can be seen. No? My world and my problems and aspirations, my pain is seen, and the one who is suffering the pain is seen also. By what is it seen? I said, don't just think, look. Can the seer be seen? Like this. So if the seer can be seen, it must be another subtle seer. And it just in that kind of introspection, all this clutter just dissolve. What remain? If something remain, that will also be seen. Can that which can testify and say all this is illusory, can that itself be seen? Where does this introspection lead? Everything just dissolve into. It. And what sees this also? So it doesn't keep multiplying. It just contract, contract, contract into nothingness, and even nothingness is seen. By what is it seen? Don't invent. Be very clean by what is it seen. It cannot be said by what is it seen. The fact is that whatever it is, that can be seen. This seer cannot be seen. Can the seer be itself an object of perception? If it is an object of perception, what is the subject? If you say, well, there is no independent subject, who is speaking this? So it just cancels out all the the shapes that are created in the mind. What is left behind? Frustration. No. Indescribable peace and joy. That which sees all these things. What's the evidence of it? Can you photograph it? Can it be shown? No. So 
So don't get into the habit of talking about this with every Tom, Dick and Harry you meet. Don't go and talk about people. This is you keep looking, 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 until the very idea you have of yourself as a looker phenomenally, that also collapses. Then you may ask, then what? Say, I won't tell you, find out. Find out. That is grace. It is the grace of God that is initiating that impulse to look and to guide your looking. And he is looking. Hmm? And he is looking. Yes. Good, good. Maybe enough for now. Thank is you a you long cup of tea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Grace for all of us. Yes. So, what what remains now? What's left? Is there any autobiography of that which is left now? If you go to your mind, it's going to be willing to create something about it, but also not in it. Cannot be that. Also, from the mind will come some itch. Like it's, it's, it's itching, because it wants the food of phenomenal uh, interaction. But that's also watched. Can you bear, can you bear the, the, your own emptiness? Because the mind is going, the mind is biting its fingernails. But that's also just you, you can watch that. Can you bear this? Because that's also important. Because you may find yourself twitching, something's twitching. Oh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to suppress the mind. Say no, no, no. Let, let, let them go. You are the weakness of this. Just you see. So it's going to take some subtlety, some persistence, aided by the grace of God. Because without aid by the grace of God. Goodbye. You have to stay with that. Be respectful of the presence of God. This this level of introspection is itself devotion and generated out of the, the love of God. And there is a saying, He who is in search of himself finds God, and he who is in search of God finds himself. Same, same. But not himself personally. Watch out, not yourself personally. The person is the price that will be paid. Who will pay the price? I can't say. Total joy. Total happiness. Thankfulness. Trust. May the essence of what we share. Be stabilized in you. Because mind will try to fight against it, but because it's brought by grace, you remember that, you will not be swept away by it. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much.